morning, everybody. Great to be here. Um, yeah, I, I think things are getting desperate when you're with these Zoom meetings, missing fellowship. I was missing fellowship that much. I even called in and saw Fred through the week. And um, the Lord rewarded me for that too. Leslie made a beautiful chicken and sweet corn soup and the best cup of coffee I've had out there. So it was very nice. I have to call in and see Fred a bit more often. <laughs> very good. Okay. Um, I want to talk about something a little bit different today. Um, um, and um, as you know, uh, last weekend was Mother's Day. And um, I've just been thinking about how blessed the women in our church are and how much they are unsung heroes in, in, in the fellowship and in the Bible. And um, I just thought this morning we might look at some of the amazing uh, scriptures about women in the Bible and just like if we could all emulate these women, we would be just, we would be floating on cloud nine. Um, and I think many of our women in the fellowship just do an amazing job in their ministry. Um, and, um, you know, I, I sort of think about, um, just as some introduction, you know, like, uh, you know, I suppose, um, y you know, uh, we, we read about, you know, the tragic sort of situations in, in countries that are ruled by the Taliban where, you know, women are just treated like doormats. It's just, it's just so horrible. I've read a few books recently about just some of the, just the cruelty and the barbarism and, and, and probably even in our own society, you know, it's, it's been a while. I remember when I first started in the public service in 1969, that, you know, it was only just a few years earlier that, you know, that uh, the women in, in the public service were paid less than the men, which was just crazy. I mean, you know, you sit at the same desk, you do the same job, why shouldn't you get the same pay? And but that was fixed up by the time I joined, but I think when Barbara's mother was in the public service, she had to leave, where, you know, if, if you became, you know, if you became pregnant and, um, you know, and so gradually over time, society has evolved and, and um, you know, there's, there, there's a lot more fairness in society. There's still a long, long way to go um, in, in, um, in, in uh, you know, in their freedom. And even today, there's still some jobs where, where women are paid less than the men and it's terribly unfair. And, you know, I think even being in lockdown, you know, I'm sort of thinking about things a bit and, you know, like I've always worked uh, full time and, you know, for a lot of that time was pastoring and, and, you know, we sort of made the decision that if we were able to, Barb would stay home and mind the kids. And, and um, you know, a lot of, a lot of incredible effort goes into that. And then, you know, also, you know, trying to have people around for fellowship and different things. And um, so it's very much written. I was thinking, well, you know, what about when I retire in a few years time, I think, well, gee, maybe I've got to, I'm going to have to lift my game a lot. I'm going to have to do a lot more housework. I'm going to have to sort of, um, you know, um, take over. I've started doing a little bit more cooking lately and I'm really enjoying that. I've been making a few uh, lentil soups and different things. And um, um, so, you know, but, but I think sometimes we do uh, take our partners for granted. Um, and, um, you know, and, and sometimes this sort of attitude can come into the church a bit. And I don't want to say that because when I see in the, what I see in the church, I, I think that, that our women have just a, a marvellous opportunity to just serve the Lord in a very special and wonderful way. And let's start off this morning. Let's get to the scriptures in, in, in Proverbs 31, which is probably the go-to scripture uh, about this. And um, I just think these verses are so marvellous um, and so inspiring. Um, that, um, uh, you know, I think we can all get a blessing from them. Um, and and uh, there's, there's two skills of thought here, of course. Uh, of course, it is talking about our women folk, and it's also probably, uh, and uh, like the scriptures often do, they have a double meaning. It's talking about, you know, Christ and his attitude to the church. Um, but here in, in Ecclesiastes, chap no, not Ecclesiastes, that's at the top of the page, sorry, Proverbs chapter 30, so ch chapter 31, I'm sorry, chapter 31, 
Let's just start in verse 10, uh, if we could, uh, Nathan or Ben, who's ever running those, those scriptures. Verse 10, the scripture says here, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Interesting verse, this one, verse 16. She considers a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. So, you know, um, obviously in the Old Testament and in the New, women were quite accomplished business people. We read of Lydia in the book of Acts, where she was a seller of fine purple. You know, she was obviously a very wealthy woman. And, um, you know, here it, it, it's saying that, you know, this is part of their, you know, they, uh, they can be very, very businesslike. They can, you know, buy and sell, um, plant a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. The candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing of silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. You know, again, you know, this buying and selling. She's, a, she's, she's involved in society and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. You know, it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a real um, um, business acumen that, um, you know, and I think in a, in a marriage, it's a partnership. It's things that you need to talk about, business decisions. Involve your wife. Involve each other it says strength and honor are in her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness you know just an example of that you know one of the ladies rang one of the brothers the other day in the fellowship just to see how he was going and this brother told me that the call this lady made to him just lifted him up so much just really made his day you know there's just wonderful wisdom amongst all of us in the fellowship and that you know that that word fitly spoken it's like apples of gold in pictures of silver the scripture says she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is a law of kindness she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness the children arise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all Favour is deceitful and beauty is vain. You know, you haven't got to look like a supermodel. You know, good on you if you do. Um, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You know, and there are many scriptures in the New Testament that talk about this, about the ornament of a, 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 of a you know, a quiet spirit. It's not the, the outward uh, putting on of, of, of uh, sort of jewellery. and It's that, that real shining light, that woman that just shines for the Lord, that meek and quiet spirit. And that means teachable, you know. And um, uh, uh, yeah, so it goes on. She shall be praised, give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. So, you know, I think in my own you know, time, and I think, the early days in Canberra when I was some of the women there just inspired me. I can remember Bob Crockford's mother Enid. She would often prophesy in the meetings. And I would just look forward so much to hearing her prophecies. They were so inspired and so uplifting and just such a wonderful encouragement. You know, and uh, uh we read about Paul up in Timothy saying that, you know, uh, uh he said to, uh, to Timothy, uh, you know, that faith was in your grandmother. Lois and in your mother Eunice. This is where he, Timothy, was inspired by his grandmother and his mother. And like uh, uh, there was people like Erica Holtener. She used to beetle around in her old green Volkswagen. I remember 
when I first came board, she used to follow me up. She'd come, I lived in a house full of five blokes and it didn't put her off. She'd come in a little Volkswagen, pull up in the driveway and knock on the door and see how I was going. We had a lady there called Daphne Labert. She would go door knocking on her own. She'd sold a few uh, world book encyclopedias. She'd done that. And so she thought, oh, I'll turn this into, uh, um, you know, working for the Lord. And she'd just go out on her own. Of course, she bought Ann Beverly and then in turn Bob Beverly. She bought a guy called Alex McLeod and, uh, uh, to the Lord and, and, and many other folks. You know, just inspirational stuff. Never was held back in the Lord. Um, and we see this in the Old Testament. We see some just amazing examples of, of, of women of faith. We see the story of uh, Esther, you know, uh, in the Old Testament there, where Esther um, uh, went before the king and actually saved the Jewish race from being annihilated. If they had been annihilated, the Bible prophecies would never have been fulfilled. The Jews would not have returned to Jerusalem. And the whole Bible would have not, you know, and it was through one woman, one woman's faith and determination that a whole nation was saved. You know, we read in the book of Judges about Deborah. She was actually a, a judge and a, she was a prophetess and she was a leader. She uh, led her people. She, uh, you know, was, uh, uh, you know, when you read that story there, they, read, they wrote a psalm about her because she was so, um, you know, fervent for the things of God. Um, we read about um, uh, Ruth. Let's have a look at there. Ruth chapter one. I just love these verses. Another woman of, of great faith in the Bible. And we can all learn from these verses. If we just go to uh, Ruth and chapter one. I think it's just before the book of Job from memory. I think I might be wrong there. I am wrong. Back a bit further. Uh, there it is. Half the book of Judges. Sorry. I've got my books mixed up. I have to go back to Bible school. Uh, book of Judges. And then you go to Ruth. And um, there's just a, a couple of verses here. I want to... Uh, Ruth and, and chapter 1 and verse 15. And, um, and she said, this is Ruth. Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people. She came out of this country um, of, where there are a lot of uh, worldly people, pagan people. And um, her mother-in-law, um, you know, her husband had died and she was going back to the people of Israel and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the two sisters, there were two of them, Oprah and Ruth, and Oprah decided to go back to the world. She didn't want to hang around with the mother-in-law. She didn't want to go on with the people of Israel. But Ruth could see that God worked brilliantly and wonderfully in, in the mother-in-law's life. And, uh, and uh, verse 16, and Ruth said, to the mother-in-law, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. What a wonderful approach to the things of God. And brethren, male or female, that's got to be our approach. Approach Whether the Lord goes, where he sends us, where he leads us, that's where we go. As it says in the book of Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the attitude to take. Another really wonderful uh, example is the story of Abigail. 1 Samuel, let's go over there. 1 Samuel 25. 1 Samuel 25. And again, this is a story that um, um, uh, is, is, is quite amazing. Um, 1 Samuel 25, and we'll just pick it up in, um, in verse uh, 2. And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, 
and the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. So this guy, uh, now the name of the man was Nabal, verse 3. And the name of his wife, Abigail. And note this, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance, but the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. So, Naleb, sorry, um, what's his name again? Nabal, Naleb, <laughs> Nabal. Nabal was a big shot. He was a very powerful, rich, arrogant man. And, you know, um, he was apparently a very difficult person to live with. And, um, you know, he, he um, uh, but Abigail was the opposite. She was a, uh, you know, a woman of good understanding, of a beautiful countenance. And um, she had a very difficult marriage here. And often this, we can talk about this, and I've seen it in the Sydney Fellowship and Gosford, not so much in Golden, because we've been lucky. Most of the husbands and wives have come along. Um, but, um, you know, for some reason, some, in some of the fellowships, the husbands are a bit slow to, you know, they can be a bit like, um, uh, Nabal there. They can be a bit uh, sort of arrogant and churlish and not respond to the things of God. And, and Peter talks about this. He says that the, you know, the, the, the women are to win their husbands over by their, their, their meekness, their testimony, their, their sort of quiet, not nagging, not sort of, um, you know, but just being a real shining light for the Lord by being at peace and just happy in, the, in their walk with God. And that, in, of course, you know, it, it, that will impress the man. And, and we've seen many men come to the Lord as a result of their wives' testimony. And many men owe their testimony to the facts that their wives have, uh, have uh, you know, made a stand for the Lord. Um, but, um, you know, um, this was, it was quite interesting because the story goes on. And if we just go to verse 18, we're not going to read it all because we haven't got time. Verse 18. Um, it, this is where uh, King David approached this guy's farm and wanted to sort of pass through his farm and, and have some, uh, get his shepherds and a few people sort of uh, fed and looked after. And Nabal said, no, get lost. You know, I'm not going to give you any food. Go and get your own food. You can't come through my property, you know. And, and David was a well-known uh, leader of, of, of his people. And, um, you know, but this Nabal, he was just a, a real rat bag. And he said, no, get lost. So David got really cranky and he got cranky as a hornet. And he decided that he'd go and, you know, lop off, lop off uh, old Nabal's head. Now, most people would think, you know, if you're married to this guy, you think, oh, well, that'll be good. Get rid of the old jerk. Um, you know, he's, um, he, he, he's, um, he's, he's a nasty piece of work. But not, not Abigail. Not Abigail. She was a really, um, she knew that her husband was in big trouble. She knew he was a, 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 you know, a bit of a, a, bit of a, a dope, but she still had the right attitude. She really sought the Lord and she decided, well, she said in verse 18, then Abigail made, host, made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, go on before me. And she went up and she gave all these to King David. And of course, the story goes on that David was so impressed. He said, look, don't kill my husband. He's a buff head. He shouldn't have done that. This is to make up for it. Here's all this food. And it was quite a wonderful story. And of course, the story goes on that, you know, David didn't kill Nabal, let it go. And then a little while later, there was a feast and Nabal heard that Abigail had done this and he actually had a heart attack and died. And the romance of the story is that, of course, Abigail then went on um, and married King David. So, you know... The Lord sorts things out in the end if we trust the Lord, if we do things God's way, if we submit to God's word. And Abigail is just a great example for all of us. You know, uh, uh, you know Mary came to Jesus, whatsoever he, does, whatsoever he tells you to do, that do it. 
We need to be responding to the word of God, even when it sometimes goes against the grain, as it did here with Abigail. And God blessed her mightily. And, um, you know, that's the attitude that we need to take. If we go up to the New Testament, um, you know, it's fascinating. I, learned, I know, you know, the Lord, he, 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 he set up his ministry with 12 apostles. And, um, uh, you know, they were all men. And yet when he rose from the dead, the first person he appeared to in all his glory was Mary Magdalene and a couple of the other ladies. You know, none of the sort of the, you know, think he'd come before Peter or James or John. Um, you know, he loved John. The Bible actually says that. But no, he appeared um, in that way. We see, uh, um, if we go to Acts 21, Acts 21, Acts 21, some of the references to um, women being involved in the church, and I just think they're just wonderful inspiration to us. Um, Acts 21, Acts 21, and it says here in verse, uh, verse 9, it says here, um, uh, or the verse 8, and the next day we were of Paul's company, departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven that they called out after the apostles were, were to serve tables, and they abode with him, and the same man, this man Philip, he had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. You know, the Bible talks about in, in Corinthians about that we're, you know, that we're to prophesy one by one, that we all may learn and all may be comforted. And the Bible says to covet these gifts. And for these, you know, people, daughters to be, to be called out by that, it, it, it just is an indication of the importance of that role in the church. You know, and as I said, over the years, I've just heard so many prophecies, you know, expressed in the meetings, male and female, where they just, it just brings home the bacon. It just hits the nail on the head. There's a great calling there to do these sort of things. If we go to Acts 18, back there, back to chapter 18. I really like this verse here, these couple of verses. Acts 18, verse, uh, verse, verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and he came to Corinth. And, uh, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife, Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So, you know, Aquila and Priscilla are here mentioned in the scriptures, and they're mentioned several other times. We go to verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Chantria, for he had a vow. He took them with him. These two, you know, man and wife, were so instrumental in helping Paul get out the gospel. We go over to verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to teach boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. You know, they were both used mightily. And, um, you know, to further the gospel. And over the years, I've seen many, you know, male and female teams. I remember when I started the young people's group in Canberra, we used to have, um, you know, Joe and Deidre Abel as, as our team leaders. We'd have um, um, uh, quite a few other married couples as team leaders. And it used to work so well. And again, you know, in ministry, I know with John Kerwood, he was always, you know, always encouraged to take a woman with us if we had to go and see another woman, you know, and they would always be able to chime in and minister to folks. There is such a role in the church for our women to take, you know, to, to uh, um, you know, go out in the prayer room with people and, uh, you know, pray with people and encourage them. 
and to show them scriptures. This is all what God wants you to do. There's such a ministry that is available in our church. And, um, you know, that's why we encourage people to know your Bible, read your Bible. And, you know, you can ring people up and you can encourage them. You can say, look, I saw this scripture. I read this scripture. This might help you. We are all in God's family and we all have a ministry. We all have a, um, uh, you know, something to do. Um, we read over in, uh, in, in Romans and in chapter, um, chapter 16. Let's go there for a minute. Romans chapter 16. Um, Romans 16. Uh, Romans 16, verse 1. And it says here, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, was at Gentria, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that you assist her in whatever business she had need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many and of myself also. And then in verse 3, he says, Greek Priscilla, he mentions her first here, and Aquila. You know, she must have been a real dynamo in the things of God. Greek Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Wonderful inspiration to us all. 1 Corinthians 16. Let's go there for a minute. 1 Corinthians 16. Sixteen and um, verse nineteen, the churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you, much in the Lord, with the church that is in their house. So real encouragement there from the Lord. Um, let's go to First um, Peter chapter three. Let's just go there for a minute. First Peter chapter three. Just looking at some of these verses. First Peter chapter three. And it says here in verse one, likewise you wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word, you know, by being banged over the head with a baseball bat, be won by the conversation of the wives, by their testimony. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it be not that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. What a verse. You know, that attitude is just such a of great price to God. You know, like in, if we go back to First Timothy chapter two, this is a, probably a, 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 you know, some people see this as, as a controversial scripture. I don't. Um, but if we go to First Timothy chapter two for a sec there, for a second there, and then we'll look at a balancing scripture to work that one out. One Timothy uh, chapter uh, two, chapter two, and um, it says here in verse nine. Um, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame, patience and sobriety, not with bra bra braided hair, gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. It says here, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Well, I think that's not to interrupt in church meetings, which was possibly a problem at, in Corinth. Um, but he says there, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority of the men but to be in silence. So, you know, it says there in the Bible that's about the only restriction that's placed, you know, is that, that, that they're not allowed to preach and allowed to, to, uh, to teach from the platform. Now, that seems to be the only restriction I can find in the whole Bible to the ministry of women. But some people take that out of context and just think, oh, well, you know, uh, that's not fair or whatever. This is the word of God. We can't get around it. We can't change it. That's what God says. We don't call the shots. And, um, you know, but as far as every other ability, it, it's all there. There's a ministry and many of our women fulfill it to such a wonderful degree. Be inspired by the word of God. Because it says over here, as a counter a bit to that scripture, if you, if you feel that's a bit tough, 
Um, Galatians 3, just go there for a minute. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, and it certainly puts things in context here. Galatians 3 and verse, uh, verse 27. Um, oh, sorry, verse 26. For, verse 26. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's an amazing verse. Like, if you think about that, in the early church, there were slaves. People had slaves and masters. And once people came to the Lord, Paul made it clear that the slave was just the same in God's sight, just as equal as the master who might have been a very wealthy man and had many slaves. But if the slaves came to the Lord, they were exactly the same. Or if they were Jew or they were Greek, there's no difference. Same with male and female. No difference in the sight of God. We are all heirs with Christ. We are all co-heirs with the Lord. And we all have a ministry to partake in. You know, we all have a wonderful ministry that we can fulfill. And it's exciting when you look at some of these examples that I've been looking at today. Boy, oh boy, they are inspirational. They should inspire all of us. Let's go to, um, let's finish up in a moment. Um, let's finish in chapter two of Titus, the book of Titus. Chapter two of Titus. You know, I can think of um, ladies in the Sydney Fellowship. I think of Ros Walker, Ros and Barry. They've been a great team together. Um, Ros Chow is another she's a Chinese lady down there. And I've another Chinese lady called Evelyn. Her husband's never come along. Always been difficult for her, but she's been so faithful. Such an inspiration to many. Um, there's just, you know, when I look back over the years, we've got so many, in, you know, throughout our fellowships, of, of, of folks that do just such an amazing job. They see no, you know, they just see that a real zeal and desire to serve the Lord. And here Titus gives us a bit of an example here to all of us, some instruction. We'll finish here this morning. Chapter two of Titus, verse one. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men, that's probably Pastor Craig and me now, we're getting on a bit. Um, the aged men be sober, grave temperate sound in faith in love in patience the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children you know and people say oh well why do women teach in the sunday school well that's part of bringing up children in in the lord in the fear and admonition of the lord that's such an important role. It's, that's quite different to actually, you know, uh, preaching to the congregation. We need to bring our children up, you know, and I really appreciate over the years the Sunday school and the, the work that the different women have put into it and some of the men as well. And, you know, my kids have benefited from that. My children have benefited greatly from that grounding that they've had in the Sunday school. There's such a role there uh, to love their children to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. You know, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. I've often said that, you know, marriages in the law, they should be the best marriages on the planet. There should be a real equality there, a real uh, care for one another, a real uh, love and, and respect for each other. Uh, no dominion, no sort of uh, lording it over, but a real, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a care for each other, the, the men loving their wives, the Bible says as Christ loves the church and died for it. A big calling, a, a high calling. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that can't be condemned, that he may prove that he is that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants, well, we're servants to our bosses, you know, Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Not poor learning, that means stealing, you know, knocking off the boss's stationery or his tools or his goods. 
but showing all good fidelity that thou may adorn the doctrine of God our Saviour in all things. For the grace of God that to bring us salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us, all of us, that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. You know, don't wrestle with the word of God. Accept everything it says and be inspired by it. You know, those examples I've given this morning, they're examples of inspiration of how, you know, this marvelous role that, that, that folks can have in the church, male and female. You know, rejoice in it. And I think it's, you know, our future is very bright. We're, when we come out of this lockdown, I think we're going to see a lot more people, you know, appreciating the simpler things of life. There's going to be opportunities. And we're going to need all of us on deck. All of us. All of us. You know, um, speaking and exhorting with all authority. We're going to need to be on the job for the Lord. We've got a big job ahead of us. All the people said, Amen. Back to you, Pastor Craig.